Hey guys, what's up? My name is Grant Borland, and today I want to show you five different trailer libraries I like to use when writing a trailer track. Today I've written a short track using each one of these libraries. I'll play through the track so you can hear what it sounds like together, and then um, from there we'll kind of dig into what each one of these libraries offer. It'll it'll be kind of like a short little walk through through each of these. There's plenty of videos out there that will get more in depth with you know what each one of these libraries really has to offer but I'll just kind of do a quick walk through and hopefully you know you guys get something out of it so without further ado let's uh, play this track I wrote All right, cool. Um, so the way I've organized this session is uh, each each library I write with, I color coded. So there's five libraries I want to cover today. All these tracks in blue, and then all these ones in green, and so on and so forth. But the first one that I like to use usually is um, Keep Forest's Devastator, I believe it's called. Um, let me load that up real quick. Uh, Devastator is kind of jack of all trades for trailer music, I would say. It, it, you know, it just offers a wide variety of a bunch of different trailer sounds and tools. Actually, as you can see, like, probably half of this track, yeah, exactly half of this track was written just using Keep Force's Devastator. I've got it pulled up, but Keep Force Devastator's split between the main instrument and then an expansion pack which are both sold separately for this video i'm just going to kind of group them together because it's kind of the same thing so what i have going on in this track is uh the the hook sounds that you hear as well as different hits and drums are are all coming from devastator let me just kind of play through this little this little section and uh you can hear what's going on just with devastator So as you hear, most of the track is Devastator. It's kind of the tool I use a lot of times to sketch out my trailer tracks, and then a lot of times I'll go back through and layer in various other libraries to kind of beef up the sound a little bit. But, you know, the thing I like about Devastator a lot is its unique sound design. When I write trailer music, I usually like to start with, like, a hook sound. And uh, for those of you that don't know what, like, a hook sound is or what I'm talking about, a hook sound is basically a sound that kind of starts a lot of times at the beginning of a piece and it's just like an interesting an interesting bit of sound design it doesn't even have to be sound design it's just an interesting sound that kind of gets a listener interested in the piece of music right off the bat so a lot of times I use Devastator to kind of find really really neat sounds to use as a hook so I started out with this this patch that basically just loops throughout the whole entire track um, I just I, I really like sounds like that I think it's really good for hybrid trailer music it just always sounds interesting and I think Devastator or the guys that keep forest really nailed it with uh, with the sound design portions of this library a lot of times I'll find that hook sound and maybe I'll go ahead and filter filter parts of the sound and then layer in other sounds like for example, I found this cool distortion sound in Devastator, and I layered it under the initial hook sound, so it kind of sounded like this. You get the idea. So it just kind of added a little, a little more... Uh, grit to it I would say kind of filled out some of those lower frequencies with it just kind of gave it a little bit of a nasty edge to to that initial sound 
other things I like using Devastator for are the uh, the hits as well as the, like the synthetic percussion sounds. Specifically, this patch called uh, Synthetic Drums. I've got it right here. Now, you'll see too, if I open up this session a little bit, you'll notice that I've got some audio files as opposed to WAV files. Um, disclaimer is that all these sounds are coming from Devastator, at least in these blue sections. I've just gone ahead and bounced the MIDI to audio because it was just easier for me to work with. I like doing that a lot of times with um, like risers and hits and things like that so I can line them up right on the grid. Um, it just works better than hitting like a, a key and then having to drag that MIDI note over till it lines up right. I, it's just a faster workflow for me personally. So that's what's going on with that. These are some of the drums from Devastator. One thing I do notice about these drums where they sometimes sound like there's like some phase issues. I don't know if that's like what is intended, but I do notice that like sometimes it sounds a little wonky. I do love like the high end of it though. It sounds like just big high sticks or something. And I love layering that underneath other percussion that kind of just fill out that frequency spectrum. Um, but I, I use these these a lot, these drums. But yeah, just if you're using it, just watch out for that. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I, I do notice that like there's some kind of like phase sound. I don't know if it's like maybe an effect that's like baked into these samples. Um, but I don't know, something to keep in mind. Other than that, for Devastator, it's really just layering in these different hits and kind of filling out that sound. You know, I, I use other libraries to fill out, you know, the percussion which I'll get into more in a minute. But you know, you got some of your low stuff and then really these these hits. So if I get rid of these hook sounds and just layer in the hits with the percussion, you're gonna get something like this, which is pretty cool. Oh, you know, and I've also got these risers too. I'll add those in. The risers in this library sound phenomenal too, by the way, I don't wanna overlook those. Um, but yeah, so this is what it sounds like without those hook sounds and this is just kind of like just shows you kind of what sounds you can get out of just this library alone. Um, I think it's a phenomenal writing tool and I definitely encourage you to pick it up if you're not already using it in your workflow. really cool I, I love those hits I love those whoosh hits and just that's that's some of my favorite um, parts about writing trailer music is just layering in the hits with the percussion and when to you know layer in a whoosh hit and then just normal I don't know just like that whole composition aspect of just layering these different sounds it just I don't know it's really cool and inspiring moving on the next library I have is uh, gravity so I'm really, in this instance, I'm really using gravity as just um, some filler. I've got some pads going on here, as well as uh, some sub hits. Um, I'll let you hear what that sounds like right now, but it's kind of just like what's buried underneath the track. The thing I like about Gravity most, I'm, there's so much content within Gravity, but I think like my favorite patch or my favorite part of Gravity are those like low deep sub hits. Um, this is used on every single track I ever write, like trailer, production music, whatever. Like if I'm going for a deep like boom sound, um, I'm always pulling up Gravity. I just 
it's an older library, but I just think that it, it holds up. I just, I love the sound of it. I'm used to it. I like the way it fits, fits in the mix most of the time. I've also got these pads going on too, which I'll, here, I'll pull that up real quick. Um, there's, there's just so much in gravity. You just can't go wrong. Where is it? Where am I? Oh, there it is. So basically, um, gravity consists of these four main uh, folders within them. Um, yeah, so like for example in this hits folder, it's hits but it's also your sub booms and different tails and things that come from like hits and impact sounds. Um, so it's not just like your your traditional hits, there's definitely more more within that, but it's, it's definitely something I, I use all the time. This hits folder is definitely 99% of the time what I go to if I pull up gravity. But there's plenty of really useful stuff in here too, like the pads, you know, they break those up depending on like um, if you want them to sound com more complex or if you want it more of a like a stripped away sound and um, sound a little more ambient. It just, they have a ton of different sounds in there. If I open that up, oh yeah, and I mean depending on the mood or style you want, like there's all those different categories too so if we pull up aggressive you can just kind of see you know all these different um pad options and the thing that's cool about this engine too is like here let me play something real quick so that's the bass sound that i'm using it's patch called aftermath um you know you get different uh effects over here on the left you get your reverb your chorus delay and distortion as well as like an ADSR, like your envelope, and uh, what is this, like different layers too. There's just a lot in here, but I really like this sequencer portion too. Like if I turn it on down here in the bottom right. It's like an instant pulse. It's like a, a f it's like a step sequencer, but instead of like playing notes or r rhythms, it's more of uh, different like glitch effects or something. I don't know. I've always liked this about Gravity. It's just another way to kind of make these sounds a little bit more unique to your own compositions. But yeah, in this in this particular track I'm writing, I'm really only using Gravity for the pads and then some of the low end support with those sub booms. Yeah, from there. I think another great library that I use all the time is Damage. Now, before anyone comes at me in the comments saying that this library is extremely old, just know that this library still holds up. I think there's tons of people who are using this library, and yeah, there's other percussion libraries out there that sound great, um, and I use, I, I do layer it. Damage is definitely one I still go to all the time, and I think it's just got just a, such a good sound for trailer music. I'll play it really quick so you can kind of see what it sounds like. Now on its own, it might not sound massive or that interesting, um, but it's, it's one of those things, it's just such a good layering tool. Now if I'm usually writing a trailer track, I'm pulling out my other percussion libraries to kind of fill out that spectrum, but when you have this layered with some of like the various hits and synthetic percussion from something like uh, Devastator by um, Keep Forest, you really start to get a, a full... Um, percussion sound like here let me show you what that sounds like I'll show, show you some of these too so with the percussion and the hits I mean there's really not that much layering going on and you get you you get such a cool sound right out of the bat Uh, 
that's it's cool. I love this library. With damage, a lot of times I go for this Armageddon kit, which I think is kind of what most people use it for too. It's arguably one of the best patches in, in that library. But it also offers, you know, different loops and different types of kits, you know. If I play something real quick, I got a little bit of latency, but... I don't know, you get those cool like tom sounds and one thing I like to do with damage a lot of times too is throw this free OTT plugin by um, Xfer. Um, they're the guys that make the the synthesizer serum, but they have this free um, plugin. It's kind of I guess I'd call it a multiband compressor, but uh, you know, it adds a lot of distortion or saturation to a sound and it really um, dramatically changes it. For example, I'll play, I'll play part of this right now with OTT on, and then I'll turn it off, and you can kind of just see what it's doing. So if I loop this section here, so it's off right now. to bring it kind of to the front adds a little bit more energy a little bit more life to it it doesn't work for everything but I really like using it on uh, on my drums and especially damage um, I really just think it kind of brings it to life a little bit more uh, moving on though this next library although I don't do it nearly um, enough justice but there's this new library I picked up recently called sonar it's by a company um, named Fallout Music Group. Um, this this thing is basically the trailer ping machine. It's what I like to go to for a lot of my hook sounds. I think it's very very well laid out. Um, they give you three layers to to blend your sounds with and various other uh, effects too. Let me show you real quick what I got going on. Let me move this off to the side. If I just solo this. Hear some of the sounds from it. I mean, really, <clears throat> I've stripped away a lot of these sounds from it too. I've got, I think, two of these layers turned off right now. Yeah, I've added a little bit of distortion, or uh, it's like a compression distortion type thing. This destroy knob here um, a little bit of delay it looks like too but um, the thing that's really cool about this too if I pull pull it up the way I've laid out this this session is I've got all these different tracks but at the bottom I've gone ahead and pulled up instances of these so I can quickly access it and I haven't even been using that in this video <laughs> but anyways um pulling up sonar you basically get one two and three these different boxes and they, these are three different sounds that you can blend to make your own kind of pings um if i drop down down this first layer you i mean these are all the different um sounds you can choose from and you can mix and match between your various layers you can pan it you can add distortion phase it um obviously um mess with the volume on it too, all these different effects. I mean, I can make a whole video based on this library alone, but just for time's sake, I will just let you guys know that this library is incredible. Um, a lot of times they've got this little randomized button right here too. If I click on one of these and it'll just choose a random sample. I mean, I guess that could work too. I think the sky's the limit, but let me try something else. Pretty crazy stuff. Man, that's cool. I don't know. There's, I think I, 
I like these metals the most. Let me mute that. These are so cool. Add a little bit of pressure. The thing that's cool too, <clears throat> I meant to say, is the way that they've laid this out. Um, let me go. Where am I trying to go? Yes, if you look down here, th these green keys are like these sounds with baked in effects but if you don't want like all the reverb and such you can also play these orange sections which are the same sounds but they're unaffected so I'm playing this F and that's in the orange section but if I play that F in the affected section you get all like the reverb and stuff so I mean, that can be really useful, too, if you want to go ahead and just start with that dry sample and then start to add your own reverbs and delays to them. Yeah, see, it starts to come in. Anyways, that's kind of that. That's a quick little run through of that. But Sonar is definitely a library worth checking out. Um, I've been using a, a lot recently. It's a brand new library, too. But, um, yeah, the company's called Fallout Music Group, and you should definitely check that out, too. Yeah, to finish this off too, another library I use all the time is um, this Azurex or Azurex. I, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but this is made by Keep Forest as well, the company that made this um, Devastator library. Oh, I like a lot of their stuff if you haven't haven't noticed. Right now, I'm really just using this library for their uh, their hits, and I think I got some little snare thing to accent the percussion but yeah so it's kind of like a snare thing going on and then I'm just layering in the hits from that too which I have also just bounced from MIDI that's why you're seeing audio tracks here as opposed to the MIDI um, but this is what those sound like get the idea um I just I think it's really important to just kind of layer a lot of these same sounds like I've got lots of hits going on but there's just something that makes a piece sound a little more unique when you layer different kinds of hits in there and you're not just strictly using the same hits over and over I think it just kind of adds just makes it a little more polished and interesting sounding I think but yeah yeah let me pull up Azurex really quick um, I've got a patch going right now. <clears throat> oh, it's this hits patch. So, and I'm not getting sound. Oh God. It's cause it wasn't soloed. Um, so this, this is what this sounds like. And they're all just mapped to different keys. So it's all pretty similar. Um, at least for this patch, this uh, organic hits. But I'll usually just play a few of these in and then bounce that audio out and then just chop and manipulate from there to fit the session I'm working on. So yeah, this is the, the classic trailer toolkit too, by the way. I, they've got another um, Azurex library. I think it's like Cyberpunk or something like that. Um, that's cool too. Um, I don't have it, but the demos sound cool. But I, I use this classic trailer toolkit a lot uh, but there's cool like loops and um, synthesizers in, in there too as well as your classic like hits um, your sub hits your your booms uh, downers brahms uh, cool like signal sounds and tonal effects uh, I think all that stuff's really useful when layering they've got these cool these benders too I let me show you that that's worth showing without doing a full walkthrough of everything um, these benders are kind of useful. Man, you soak that in some reverb. Uh, just, man, that can sound nasty. It's like, 
that's the thing with Keep Forest, man. Their stuff just sounds so freaking unique. I love it. I love it so much. Anyways, um, to wrap up what I'm saying, I think uh, these are five different libraries that um, can be really useful when sketching out trailer tracks. Um, if you're new to trailer music or, you know, you're just looking for new libraries to play around with, I definitely think that these five would be um, <clears throat> incredibly useful for, for your workflow. Um, like I said, like Keep Force, Devastator, and uh, Azer X, those are like some tools I always go for. Um, I think that they're incredibly useful. The sound design sounds great, and it's most importantly, when I use it, I'm just inspired to, to start and finish my, my music. So I think it's worth its weight in gold there. Um, but you know, damage for percussion, um, gravity for all the cool ambient, um, pads and risers and, you know, more hits and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I go for a lot of these, um, libraries that bring something unique to the table. And, uh, <clears throat> that's, that's why I kind of wanted to bring all these up in this video. Um, as you've noticed, none of these are orchestral. These are all aimed at hybrid sound design type stuff. Um, but yeah, yeah, I'd say the Keep Force stuff is good. Um, Heaviosity's Gravity and Damage are worth checking out, as well as um, Fallout Music Group's Sonar. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I would say that's that's about it. Yeah, if there's any any libraries that you, you guys have that you, you like to use a lot, leave that in a comment below. I'd like to know what everybody's using. But these are five libraries I wanted to share with you guys. Uh, I hope you liked it, and I will play this track one more time so you can kind of hear everything together. Yeah, and thanks for watching.